Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the uh, list of contents uh, for today's webinar. Uh, after the introduction of uh, both speakers, uh, I will have a brief introduction to the reuse company. And uh, I will try to convince, I don't know if it is, uh, I can say convince uh, some of you or, or just uh, remember some others, uh, the need of uh, text requirements, even uh, when we deal with uh, model-based systems engineering, especially with Capella. And uh, we will go through a demonstration of uh, seven uh, different uh, use case uh, of uh, having this uh, connection as seamless as possible and, as, and of course, uh, fully consistent between text requirements and, and models. So, some a few words about uh, my company, the reuse company was established in 1999 as a spin-off of a uh, university here in Madrid. It initially uh, made up uh, of uh, systems engineers, but very soon we realized of uh, the world of, uh, uh, sorry, initially software engineers, sorry, but uh, we jumped into the field of uh, systems engineering many years ago. Uh, in fact, uh, there are several CSEP people in the company, several uh, ASEP and one ESEP. Uh, there are only three in Spain and uh, one is uh, working for us. So our headquarter is still in, in Madrid, Spain. Uh, we have an office in Stockholm and a special delegation in Tokyo. And we aim at uh, opening our branch uh, in the US uh, in the last quarter of this year. Uh, uh, still don't know the uh, the final location, but uh, probably it's going to be Boston, right? So what we do, uh, we at Adorius Company, we are a tool vendor specialized in the application of semantic technologies and artificial intelligence to improve the digitalization of the systems engineering lifecycle. And this is what uh, we want uh, to demonstrate uh, today in this webinar. Uh, normally, uh, we at Adorius Company, we like to use the acronym TRC for Adorius Company. Um, uh, but it is not that TRC uh, is the acronym of the reuse company. It is also that uh, the re uh, TRC could also be the acronym of the three main pillars of our technology. If you allow me just a little change, because in Spanish, uh, quality, the word uh, quality is spelled with C, while perhaps in the rest of the world, it is uh, almost <laughs> is spelled with a Q. So if you allow me this change, and then we can say that uh, we deal with uh, traceability uh, T for traceability, R for reusability, and Q for quality. Uh, today, we will focus a lot uh, on the T and the Q, or the C. Uh, T for traceability and uh, C for quality are going to be our key topics uh, for, for today. So, after this uh, brief introduction, let me uh, try to convince you that the need of uh, text requirements, uh, even uh, when uh, you deal most of your uh, system sharing activities uh, on top of uh, Capella. So this is uh, a definition of what Capella is. Uh, you know it uh, better than me, so I am not going to go over this uh, definition, but just to highlight uh, one uh, small uh, topic, small, but it is the first one, perhaps there is a reason behind this, which is uh, to understand uh, the customer needs, right? So if we go and, and check all the definitions, the, uh, for instance, the definition of uh, systems engineering according to the systems engineering body of knowledge, then we can find things like uh, the definition of the customer needs and, and refined functionality early in the development cycle. That's why uh, when and documenting requirements, right? So that's why we do think that, um, uh, of course, uh, we need models uh, because models uh, uh, helps uh, formalize and consolidate the customer and system requirements. Um, those models uh, could be transformed from uh, models of the need into models of the of the solution, right? That helps validate feasibility and elicit or justify some new requirements. Uh, sometimes, especially for for subsystems, this is what, uh, as we will be presenting today, we like to call it the sandwich uh, model. And uh, but uh, together with this, uh, we like to introduce the box of uh, text or requirements that are the heart of uh, the current systems and practices according to the previous definition I was uh, including, right? Uh, so clearly, uh, models are fully uh, needed. Uh, it is a must, uh, especially in this community, Capella community, because models add rigor to the to, to needs, uh, uh, expression and solution descriptions. Models enable automatic processing and, and uh, simulation, and uh, a model requ uh, requirement can formalize a text requirement and explicit its effects and ramifications in a, in a in a better way than text. However, uh, aside uh, from that, uh, uh, it is also clear that um, 
uh, we uh, need uh, textual requirements because text is normally uh, better for the first interaction with uh, customers and suppliers. Uh, legally binding documents are normally written in text. I haven't uh, signed in my life a contract uh, uh, with a bank or with a customer, with a supplier, uh, just with a diagram. Normally the contracts, uh, legally binding documents are uh, written in, in, in natural language, in, in, in plain uh, English or French or Spanish or whatever. High level needs and, and other expectations uh, like environmental requirements, uh, regulations, etc., are easier to be expressed uh, with uh, textual definitions or textual descriptions or requirements. Uh, some expectations as well on a given element at a given uh, engineering level do not require any formal modeling, uh, just uh, text, uh, plain text that uh, could be enough. And text allows uh, for a much easier focus on quality verification of uh, textual requirements, right? So, um, having said that, uh, we do believe, and this is our approach, we do believe uh, a textual form of needs and requirements uh, are not only useful, but are fully necessary. This is our approach. Uh, however, of course, what we need, uh, knowing that uh, we need both uh, sides, uh, textual requirements and model requirements, uh, some uh, people from the Capella community, they like uh, to call these uh, uh, need models, uh, they like to call it uh, uh, model requirements as well. Uh, both has to be fully synchronized and fully coherent and fully uh, uh, consistent uh, uh, between textual requirements and models, right? That's why uh, we have uh, come out with uh, these uh, seven way of uh, keeping uh, this uh, seamless uh, connection between requirements, uh, textual requirements and, and model requirements uh, as smooth as possible and as uh, consistent as possible. And uh, this is uh, going to be our uh, seven use cases for today's web, right? So we will uh, start with uh, requirements uh, in, in these uh, particular examples and uh, the, the demonstrations you will see today. Uh, we are using IBM doors as a matter of example. However, uh, this uh, can be done uh, not only in IBM doors, but uh, also in doors next generation, Polarion, Team Center, uh, JAMA, and uh, plenty of other uh, tools uh, um, uh, aimed at uh, managing textual requirements, right? So this is going to be the, the beginning. And these are the seven use cases that uh, we will be introducing you one by one, right? So let me just uh, go for the first uh, use case uh, uh, where we will be demonstrating how uh, requirements can be written in uh, in um, in, a, uh, in, a, in a textual form uh, in uh, tools like IBM Doors. However, uh, uh, tools uh, are uh, allowing you, uh, the user, to uh, keep uh, coherence between uh, between both the textual requirements and the models. If I go, for instance, uh, for a definition of uh, uh, the characteristic number eleven uh, according to the guide to writing requirements. Uh, uh, of course, I am not uh, going to read uh, all this uh, block, but uh, it is clear that uh, all terms used uh, with the needs and requirements statements are consistent with the architectural model, right? So this is a must in uh, keeping uh, consistency between uh, textual requirements and uh, uh, models in, in Capella in this case, right? So we will demonstrate uh, today several use cases uh, based on, on this notion of uh, keeping consistency between requirements and models. And I will start with, uh, with the so-called completeness uh, checking. In our approach uh, for the quality of requirements, we like uh, to uh, distinguish uh, three different um, uh, dimensions uh, for the quality of textual requirements. Uh, the first one is correctness for the quality of individual requirements. And the other two are consistency and completeness uh, for the quality of uh, overall sets of, uh, of requirements, right? And in terms of consistency and completeness, most of the times uh, the reference uh, to check uh, this consistency or the reference to check this completeness is a model. And this is what uh, I want to show you in this first uh, use case, where I will be uh, showing you first uh, uh, a requirements specification in, um, in, uh, in doors. So this uh, tool is the SAS Engineering Studio by Verius Company. And uh, this tool allows uh, to connect uh, to uh, different uh, uh, requirements repositories. So the first step will be just to connect uh, to, to one requirements database. Uh, but uh, uh, what we want to check is the completeness uh, for one particular dimension, which is the completeness of the PVS at the first level. Just to keep it simple, I just want the tool to help me 
meeting the completeness in in the definition with textual requirements in those now i'm connecting to a those repository um uh, i want uh, the tool to help me uh, keeping the completeness meaning if uh, in my model i had one uh, full system of interest uh, and five uh, subsystems or main systems for this uh, full system i want five requirements in in this document uh, speaking about uh, this uh, decomposition right so uh, i have connected as i said uh, the engineering studio to uh, those um, uh, document uh, these are all my requirements in those and uh, uh, this is uh, this is the quality checking of the engineering studio uh, where i'm analyzing the three dimensions the C the ccc correctness consistency and completeness just to demonstrate how quick it is this is by the way real time for, of course for a small project uh, only 154 requirements so the ccc approach uh, or, or checking has been done and I move now to completeness and uh, the tool is telling me that I am not complete in 20%. So that means that uh, if you remember, there were five uh, sub elements. So uh, being complete uh, 80 and, and complete uh, 20 means that uh, I have missed uh, one out of these uh, five elements. So, so that means that the tool is looking for a requirement uh, saying that uh, the full system has to be uh, uh, or or have one of uh, each of those uh, sub systems. I need a textual requirement uh, to do so. So now, just to demonstrate other uh, possibilities, I am opening um, uh, now the DOS uh, project, the same project, of course, and the same uh, module. And uh, I have some requirements like the Temperature Warrior, which is the name of my system, shall have a, and, and then the name of the, of the different subsystems. But I mean one, I, I missed, uh, I missed uh, one, which is the one that uh, the, the tool has uh, provided us in this 20 percent so uh this is by the way the way to write requirements following patterns so i have uh, written this this is the rat uh, tool for those you know that uh, we have a rat for capella but this is the rat for those and uh, we can follow a pattern and the pattern is is connected uh, to the capella uh, uh, model in real time and providing us the name of the of the systems and sub systems so i have written now this uh, new requirement the temperature warrior which is the name of the full system of interest shall have a management system that was the the element that was missing according to this uh, uh, correctness uh, sorry completeness checking so i go and refresh this is the engineering studio back to the engineering studio so i go and refresh uh, to get uh, the the new uh, uh, element the new requirement and now i go and check uh, back uh, uh, the level of uh, completeness hoping that uh, now i am fully complete because i have the five textual requirements that uh, describe somehow the architecture that is described in the model so now i'm done uh, zero mean uh, means uh, nothing is missing according to this uh, particular dimension of the pbs and uh, uh, use case fully demonstrated right so this was just uh, the first uh, the first uh, use case now uh, we are supposed to uh, have uh, textual requirements in indoors but with the possibility to check uh, correctness and consistency uh, with um, with uh, with the models in, in capella now let's uh, go to the second uh, use case uh, but it is going to be my colleague uh, jose who will describe this second use case jose are you there mm -hmm. yes thank you very much uh, jose um so le let's uh, let's take uh, it uh, from here and we have just completed the the completeness and offering part of uh, of the use case we have already assessed the, the completeness on our requirements. And now we want to bring them, let's say, from our IBM doors tool into our uh, Capella environment, right? So this is where our capability uh, to uh, provide round trip and synchronization uh, function is going to take place, OK? So the second part, the second use case, is not going to be shown in a video because we have already uh, shown it uh, previously as a part of uh, the capabilities of the RAD for Capella tool. And in this case, I want just to uh, go briefly and skim through the different steps that we will complete. It is as simple as right-clicking on any selected or desired uh, requirement uh, or requirement specification, sorry. Then we select within the part of, within the option of uh, RAT, the synchronization uh, option. And we define, once we define the source and the target, which in this case is gonna be the source, is gonna be the doors uh, module. And the target is going to be our Capella uh, module, where we want to bring all the uh, requirements. We have to complete next the connection to doors, to IBM doors, of course, select the project, so on and so forth. And then once we have completed that, we'll be prompted with the window that you see there. And I've selected this, uh, this image because I believe it's the most important part, because it shows the capability of, uh, of the tool 
to not only, this is not only updating or pushing information from one side to another, we're able to smartly, let's say, identify which have been the, the changes. As you can see there, one of the two, the two sides is empty. So the action by default is gonna be to create the new element on the other side, on, this, on the target part, okay? But if we uh, modify, let's say, if we complete this process and we push all these uh, requirements from doors to Capella, and tomorrow we modify one of those requirements and want to synchronize back the changes into doors, we can actually do so by performing the same operation backwards, okay? So this would close, let's say, the second part of this use case. Uh, you have here a couple of links to, to refer to the actual process, and I would go on to the next part, uh, please, Jose, if we can uh, move on to, yeah, perfect, thank you. So the next part is gonna be assessing the consistency. We remember that right now we are inside Capella and we will assess the consistency between the requirements that we have just brought and the models that we have already inside the tool, okay? So this consistency, let's uh, move on to the, on to the next uh, slide, please. This consistency is basically going to evaluate whether or not we are a we have a an incorrect property defined like a, as the one that you can see here we have a set of specification uh, requirements and we have also a property uh, attribute defined with uh, the value in this case we see that there's there's a problem there we have to evaluate the consistency and provide let's say a warning so that we can uh, fix this issue the same occurs when we have an additional uh, component or subsystem inside the PBS. Well, let's see how we can actually apply this capability. Let's move on to the next one, please. Very good. So for the third use case, what we are basically doing is we have a specific requirement that we want to analyze in terms of consistency. We right-click this uh, chosen requirement. We select the option to edit the requirement, and we will be prompted with the window that uh, Jose just uh, showed uh, in the first example, right? In this window, we have uh, a real, in real time, uh, quality assessment, okay? And in the quality window, the quality part, which is called the metric summary, we're going to be provided with this specific metric that is um, that is finding an issue. In this case, let's imagine that we have our state diagram, such as the one that we have in the image, and we have a requirement which is stating a transition between two states, which is incorrect, okay, which is not non-existent, okay. So if we select the requirement and we edit the requirement, this metric summary is going to provide us an error. And it's gonna, if we click on it, it's gonna highlight where actually the states is, uh, let's say the mistake in terms of state is uh, occurring, okay? So we would just modify it and we can do so, we can just as uh, Jose uh, did uh, previously, we can refresh the information. And if we modify the requirement or we modify the model, if we refresh the information, then the assessment is gonna be updated, let's say in real time, okay? Once again, we also have uh, the same, let's say, links to the, to the session that uh, comprises, let's say, all of these in small use cases inside, okay? So let's move on to the fourth part of the use case, which is gonna be uh, the generation from uh, textual requirements to models, right? We're gonna generate models from textual requirements. And in this case, let's make it a little bit more complicated. And instead of going just from textual requirements to Capella, let's, let's put a middle step uh, uh, right there, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is to uh, generate a model in CSML, in, in Cameo specifically, okay? So let's jump into the use case. Perfect. In order to uh, analyze or revise the use case properly, the first thing that I would like to, to say is that this kind of, uh, of structure, of, uh, of approach, which basically um, consists on having models and requirements collaborate and complement each other, is known as the systems engineering sandwich, which uh, was uh, named by uh, Jeremy Dick. And uh, Jose has also mentioned it previously. It is very important because blending both sides is something key to maintain consistency and completeness and having a single source of truth. And this uh, systems engineering sandwich consists on the following, let's say. We could summarize in, in the following way. As we go from the on the left-hand side of the V model, as we go down, uh, we are decreasing in terms of complexity. And what we do in each one of the steps is first the breadth, which is going to be the requirements, right? And from and then what we are going to include are the models. We're going to generate, let's say, the models which complement the uh, the structural, the fundamental part, which are the uh, requirements, right? Next uh, step, next level of complexity, the same requirements as the breadth, and then the the stuffing or the the filling part is going to be 
uh, all the uh, different models, right? This is a very interesting analogy because as we have different types of food, we have different types of uh, models which can convert and complement the requirements that we have specified, okay? Let's jump onto the next slide. Perfect. So this is what we're basically going to see how from the left hand side, from the textual requirements, we move on to the right hand side and we generate models consistently. OK. Perfect. Yeah, we can, of course, actually go backwards and generate textual requirements from the model. But in this case, we're going to limit the, the, the example to uh, generating models from textual requirements. OK, so uh, we can open the, the video right away. Very good. In this case, we are within the Sess Engineering Studio. We have two connections here. The first one is going to be to the Cameo model, which is going to be empty. And the other one is going to be to the Doors module, which is going to be the source containing the textual requirements that are gonna, we are going to use to generate the actual model in, in the other side, let's say, in, in the Cameo, in this case, in the SysML side. Okay. So we actually complete both connections. And uh, here we can see the that the model is empty. It's a completely new model. And uh, we will see that in the end, we are going to have all the different elements that, uh, that we want within. OK, this is the specification, the connection to the DOORS module. We're going to place them all together so that we can see it in a, in a, in a better view, let's say. Left hand side is going to be the textual requirements. Right hand side is going to be, once again, the uh, model. As you can see, left hand side, the source, right hand side, the Part. Okay. Once we have the connections completed, we can see here the structural requirements. Once we have both of them completed, we go onto the uh, interoperability tab, and we basically have to uh, define, let's say, a new interoperability task. Which in this case we have already defined it, and we can see both sides. First, it's gonna we're gonna have the configuration for the source, and then the configuration for the target left and right hand side. Uh, respectively, okay? And we select specifically the operation of transforming or uh, converting, let's say, from uh, text to a uh, systemml model. We run or we execute the interoperability test. And after a couple of seconds, because this is going to be a, a simplified example, of course, we are going to have the result for the generation of the uh, systemml uh, model, okay? So it close the results uh, a window. And we finally have here the model generated. As we can see, we have there a green color, which indicates that the state of those elements is new. They have recently been created inside the source. OK, so this means that we can actually go onto the, uh, the Cameo uh, um, modeling tool and open the elements and see the elements there. OK. So let's take a look at it. We're opening the Cameo Systems model, and we have all the different elements that we have just generated. Please bear in mind that this operation can also be done in other modeling tools, of course, Capella as well. Okay. So here we have all of them, and what we will end up doing is basically generate, let's say, create the the diagram itself with the different elements that we have generated from the textual requirement. Okay. Very good. So bring all of them, we select them, and we bring all of them into the diagram. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's place it in a bit cleaner way, a little bit more organized. And here we have the uh, actual PVS for our uh, system and our project, OK? So with this, we would finish this, uh, this uh, first, let's say, interoperability use case. And of course, let's complete the second part of it. Let's skip right on to the perfect. Thank you very much for the next uh, activity, the, the, the fifth activity, which is going to be completing the cycle and moving from uh, SysML transformation to uh, Arcadia Capella. Uh, let's jump, jump right into it because it is very, very uh, similar as the previous use case and very simple and effortlessly complete. OK, let's open the video. Very good. Thank you. Once again, left hand side is going to be the source, in this case, the SysML model in, uh, in Cameo. And then what we have on the right hand side is a new, a recently created uh, Capella model. OK, we go into the interoperability tab. We define now from the beginning a new interoperability task. 
And we select as the source on the left hand side V Amio model, and on the right hand side V Capella as the target. Okay. We select specifically now the, of the transformation for CCML to Arcadia, which is this one, perfect. And in this case, we can define the name for the uh, proper interoperability task. Very good. And we just uh, have, have to execute it. Excellent. And we select to proceed, of course. Mm -hmm. We have just generated the Arcadia package, and we can select here which is going to be the destination package in which we are going to include all the information. In this case, we have selected the logical architecture, but we could select any other um, package that we have within the uh, target, in this case, the, the Capella model, of course. Okay. Very good. We have completed the execution. And here we have all the different elements that we have just transformed from CSML into uh, Capella. What we basically do in order to do this is we translate from CSML to a, a language that we have below all the different tools in the interoperability section, which is the CSRL, the Systems Representational Language. And this CSRL is converted back into the uh, Capella modeling language. Okay. And this is done according to the documentation that is uh, official from uh, Capella in terms of uh, connecting the different or relating the different elements between CSML and Arcadia, okay? Among, of course, many other things, okay? So with this, we would finish. We can see here the actual Capella model with the different elements within it. The location and the administration of the different packages can be done according to the use case. This can be tailored, but for this example, we have just included them in the data section, okay? We can uh, close, let's say, this, this part of the of the example, and I leave the floor back to you, uh, Jose, with the sixth uh, activity. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Jose. So we have start, started with uh, text requirements indoors, but now after several steps, uh, as you know, we have guaranteed uh, uh, consistency and completeness between the requirements indoors and the model in Capella, but eventually we have created uh, uh, models in Capella, first by transforming some of the text requirements into, into models in Capella, but also, of course, uh, generating more uh, model elements in Capella. Now, uh, use, case, use case number six uh, uh, will uh, show you how we can check uh, in a similar way as uh, we can check the correctness of the text requirements in, uh, in a requirements management system. We can also check uh, the correctness of, of the model based on a number of different uh, um, uh, quality characteristics, right, for, for models in this case. And um, I, I, every time I speak about the quality of models, uh, I, I like to, to mention this uh, quote by George Box, all models are wrong, but some are useful. Perhaps most of you have already heard this, uh, this, this quote. So to me, as, as uh, he uh, said as well, uh, the practical question is how wrong do they have to be in order uh, uh, not to be useful or in order still to be, to be useful. So the question is investing on uh, quality inspection uh, uh, as soon as possible of those models will really uh, pay a dividend for the success of our projects. That's why, uh, together with all the rules that we have implemented, we are very well known uh, in this community for our quality rules for, for the quality of models, sorry, for the quality of requirements, but now we can also, uh, we have already implemented some rules for the quality of, uh, of uh, models. In fact, the number of rules that we have uh, created uh, uh, especially if we compare these number of rules with the number of rules that we can analyze for for the quality of text or requirements, it is still very uh, uh, limited, it's very small. However, uh, especially those that are in, in blue here, uh, this is uh, what uh, we call parameterized uh, metrics. That means that uh, you can instantiate uh, all those metrics uh, with different uh, parameters and you can uh, end up with a large number of uh, quality rules to be checked. So let me uh, give you some some examples of uh, of uh, some of these rules, like uh, starting with uh, those on the top, like for instance, uh, checking that uh, all the all the uh, elements have a name. None of them is having an empty name. Or if you implement a rule saying, okay, I want all the logical components uh, to have uh, a description in whatever way, then you can check. Or I want uh, uh, I don't know all the operational. Uh, 
capabilities to have a specific uh, format uh, with uh, preconditions, postconditions, uh, regular steps or alternative steps or whatever, you can also check all this with uh, uh, one or more of those uh, green uh, metrics. However, when we get into the blue ones, uh, these are the actually, this is why I have put uh, this icon uh, with a strong arm there, because uh, this, uh, all those metrics are very uh, flexible and powerful because uh, they, uh, they uh, admit one or more parameters as an input and can be instantiated in different ways. So, uh, uh, these uh, rules, like uh, the first one, uh, uh, super or sub elements, uh, can be uh, configured in different ways to check, for instance, that uh, a logical system is always contained in at least uh, one diagram, or the same for an actor, an actor should be contained in at, le in at least one diagram, or a state machine without uh, any state is not uh, a good state machine, a machine, the same for any other diagram or interfaces without operations, whatever. So we can instantiate uh, this metric in different ways uh, to target uh, different uh, types of uh, elements uh, in uh, um, to check uh, the, that we meet the a number of, of uh, quality recommendations, let's say, in our organization. So the uh, this is uh, yet a second example of a parameterized metric that is uh, more focused not on the elements and uh, what are uh, where those elements are included or which uh, sub elements an element include. This was the um, the focus of the previous one. Now this one is more uh, focused on relationships, right? So by using uh, this uh, metric and uh, uh, checking uh, the configuration in different ways, uh, we can analyze, for instance, that uh, in a, in a, uh, we don't have actors uh, connected uh, because normally uh, in these kind of diagrams, what we like to connect is actors uh, with uh, with uh, use cases or, or capabilities, right? But never associations between actors and actors, right? Perhaps uh, generalizations, but uh, never associations. Uh, so this could be a mistake. And similarly, uh, actors without uh, at least uh, one uh, connection uh, to, to a use case or capability is also a mistake because uh, what is the point of this actor that uh, cannot be uh, connected to, or is not actually connected to, to any use case. So this kind of, of rules, of course, uh, can be uh, instantiated and uh, 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 the tool allows you to define uh, those, uh, those rules and run, run the, the rules and check the rules. In, in this video, just to keep it short, uh, the rules are already created, but uh, uh, if you are interested, uh, just uh, uh, send me a request and I will send you a link uh, to another video where we can uh, uh, we show how to configure all these rules, right? Now I have the engineering studio already connected uh, to a Capella model, the same as uh, uh, my colleague Jose was uh, presenting in the previous video, but now we have included more uh, manual uh, elements uh, to the diagram. So these are all the uh, rules that I have implemented following uh, one or many of those uh, parameterized uh, rules that I was mentioning before, I have came out with all these rules. Assessing or analyzing a model is as simple as, uh, as in the case of requirements, you just execute and uh, it is very quick uh, to come out with, uh, with a result. So you have elements with uh, three stars or element, uh, elements with one star, right? If I move to this other uh, section of the tool, uh, now I can see uh, all the different uh, rules that I have implemented, 14, and uh, all the elements that are meeting or not meeting this, this rule. So I can sort and uh, focus on those that are more uh, challenging, right? Like uh, missing scenarios for a, for a capability, right? So this is uh, uh, telling me or, or presenting um, uh, different uh, uh, um, diagrams in in, in Capella uh, with uh, or without or let's say uh, several uh, capabilities that are not shown in any given uh, diagram. Uh, this is yet another rule to implement uh, the typical seven plus minus rule that uh, we like to follow in the decomposition of logical components or the composition of logical functions, where the rule says that uh, a, a system normally is, uh, has to be decomposed in something like uh, seven uh, elements plus minus two. So in this video, it is very quick, but I was showing you uh, that uh, I was meeting this rule for, for the top element. Uh, I can meet the rule, but uh, not for the others that are decomposed in a number of elements that is not uh, in, in this limit of uh, seven plus minus two. Now this other uh, metric uh, is just uh, to highlight that I have uh, uh, state machines uh, with uh, 
uh, more than one initial state, for instance, this is this can be detected. So there are three initial states in uh, in this uh, in this state chart, state machine, and this is detected. Or this uh, other uh, element here, which is uh, telling us that uh, there is uh, an isolated state, uh, an state which is which has not. Uh, in or out uh, transitions, right? So these are the kind of rules that uh, can be checked. Uh, sorry, the video is, is very quick, uh, uh, moving from one metric to the other, but uh, just to give you the idea of uh, uh, things that uh, can be checked uh, uh, in an automatic way, right? And uh, then uh, we get into our, uh, use case number seven, the final one, uh, which is uh, traceability. Now that we have uh, textual requirements uh, in, uh, in a requirements management system like DOORS, and we have uh, high quality, uh, of course, high quality textual requirements, and now high quality uh, model, thanks to the, to the checking of quality at both ends, and the fully consistency between the textual requirements and the models. Now, why not establishing uh, traces between uh, those requirements in uh, in uh, doors or in, in the requirements management system and uh, the models in in Capella, right? So this uh, scenario is going to show you how to uh, easily extract or, or generate and manage uh, uh, traces between textile requirements in a requirements management system and uh, uh, model elements in Capella. So why that uh, focus on on the consistency? In our opinion, uh, consistency is a must uh, in every complex and safety critical project. It is, of course, requested by standards and good practices like uh, ISO 26262 for the automotive industry or ARP 4754 in avionics, uh, and uh, it provides uh, visibility in complex projects. So, so, uh, so these are the good points of uh, traces. However, uh, normally uh, traceability is a tedious and manual task. Uh, it requires uh, connecting tools that are normally not uh, initially thought as to be connected. In this case, I will show you how to establish traces between doors and um, and uh, Capella, <clears throat> and of course, it requires to be aware of changes. What if I modify one of my requirements? I would like the tool to tell me, well, there is a, the, one of your requirements is modified, and this requirement is linked or traced with uh, this and this and these model elements. So perhaps now these uh, three links are, uh, are now to be considered as suspicious links and, until the engineer verifies that uh, the change is not affecting those, uh, those traces, right? So, so this is uh, our well, This is a screenshot of our tool to establish in uh, traces. As you can see here, uh, we can start with the very high level uh, um, goals of my project in a Word uh, document. This is the statement of work uh, in in Word, uh, stakeholder requirements in Excel, uh, system requirements in in doors, and uh, uh, Capella uh, elements. Uh, uh, sorry, or model elements in in Capella. So I will just focus on on this. Uh, on this uh, trace. However, normally in a, in a number of project, you will come out with a large uh, number of uh, connections uh, so that uh, every box in this diagram is representing a document and every uh, arrow is the representing a, a link between two documents. In fact, uh, what is important in traceability is not uh, to, to link or to put, uh, to join together the boxes, the documents, but uh, what is important is that uh, within every of those boxes you have a number of items and uh, what is important in, in in whatever traceability project is to establish uh, traces between the individual elements so in this magnify now what i am showing is uh, this box so these are the stakeholder requirements these are the system requirements and of course following this uh, global uh, link uh, connecting the documents what you can identify is a number of links uh, for the individual uh, elements uh, connecting system requirements and uh, at, uh, the source and uh, sorry connecting uh, stakeholder requirements in the source and uh, system requirements in the target right so this is uh, what uh, you can find in, in a regular uh, traceability uh, tool uh, what we have implemented uh, goes uh, or try to go uh, a little bit uh, farther in terms of uh, as, as you have uh, identified until now and uh, according to my initial description of the company uh, we like to implement uh, uh, semantics, natural language processing and artificial intelligence to somehow understand uh, what is the actual meaning uh, of, of a textual requirement or understand the actual meaning of a model. I mean, for a, for a machine, not, not for a human, of course, right? So if we keep it with our uh, magnifier, uh, then uh, we, we can uh, check, uh, well, there is a stakeholder requirement in this, in this document. The driver shall be able to control the temperature of the car. Well, this is nice. 
if we now move upwards uh, to, to our uh, statement of work, we can find the definition of driver. So it is uh, absolutely important uh, uh, if I continue with uh, magnifiers in, in all the documents, it is absolutely important uh, to, uh, for the tool to keep uh, the digital thread and to keep uh, uh, links between all the different elements uh, in a more fine grain, fine, fine grain sorry, uh, mode, so that uh, the definition of the driver in this uh, statement of work, uh, this driver is the same driver as appears as an actor in this uh, model in Capella, or uh, is the same driver who is the actor, sorry, who is the subject in this stakeholder requirement, the driver shall. So this is the same driver. And if I speak about uh, to control the temperature of the car, Perhaps that this control the temperature of the car is the capability that is expressed in this in this uh, or the model in Capella, in, and this car, of course, uh, will be the subject uh, and the, uh, of this uh, or the document uh, system requirement where we have the car shall have a thermostat, of course, just to to control the temperature of the car. So this car is the same as uh, so this is the subject of this requirement, and this subject is exactly the same as as in this, and so on and so forth. So this thermostat. Uh, is uh, is the subject uh, of uh, is the topic for this uh, uh, fault tree analysis diagram in here, uh, and uh, is also the subject uh, of uh, this other requirement uh, in in a derivation uh, or flow down of requirements from level to level. So it is important, and this is what we call semantic traceability. It is important uh, to keep uh, the digital thread uh, until this level of uh, detail of uh, this level of the composition. So in this uh, final uh, scenario. What I want uh, to present uh, is our capability to very easily and seamlessly uh, trace uh, uh, requirements in doors with the model elements in Capella. So this is again the SES engineering studio, the same tool that uh, has been providing us all these uh, use cases. I pick uh, doors document, uh, uh, I pick uh, Capella, uh, uh, Capella model, and then I open uh, both uh, both um, uh, documents in, in the tool, right? So I pick uh, both and click on open connection. Now the tool is connecting uh, to both uh, sources, uh, to doors and retrieving all the requirements in this formal module and they will represent uh, these requirements uh, within the tool and we'll do the same with the Capella model. So Capella is being uh, launched uh, in behind, let's say, and uh, the information will appear in the screen. Uh, so now I have uh, both connectors, I can dock uh, uh, the screens uh, representing uh, any of those uh, documents. I start with the requirements first, but I drop uh, the information from the model just to dock and have uh, side by side requirements and uh, model elements. Uh, so what you see in the right hand side is a kind of kind of representation of the model. So this is not Capella, this is uh, our engineering studio, but it is uh, uh, aiming at representing the, the model uh, similar to the modeling in Capella. So I open uh, now not the quality checking, but I open the traceability uh, capability of the tool. And then I can see a number of uh, different uh, modules. Remember all those links that I was uh, presenting before. But I'm going to create uh, another link between uh, these two documents. So I click on add. This is a new uh, traceability module. So uh, I give the name for the module system requirements that are realized by uh, model elements in Capella, uh, the type of the trace to be used uh, will be uh, realizes. Of course, this is an optional uh, description. Okay, so now uh, the next step, an important step, is to establish uh, which element, uh, which document is the source, the Capella, sorry, the DOORS uh, module, and which one is the target of the trace, the Capella module, model, right? So I create, once the traceability module is created, this is the, the main uh, link uh, between boxes, but now I want uh, to have individual links between, between the individual elements. Establishing traces between uh, DOORS and, uh, and Capella is as simple as you go to the left and click on, on your requirement. Of course, you can read all the document or you can have the, the quick search or the advanced search to, to place or to find your requirement. You just click on the right what is the model element you want to connect and click on trace. That's all. So this is generating a trace that allows you to do a uh, to show traceability matrices to have impact analysis to have suspicious links when needed uh, so these kind of things and of course an optional rationale 
uh, for this uh, for this trace, right? So uh, you can create, of course, manually. You can create as many traces as needed. However, uh, uh, since uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, uh, the technology to understand what is the actual meaning of the requirements and the connecting requirements and model elements is is a straightforward for us. To us, uh, in fact, this uh, traceability suggestion algorithm is just. Uh, 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 checking what is the content of the text on requirements and wherever in a requirement we find something like, for instance, uh, when the temperature warrior is in a state uh, whatever or mode whatever, and then what we do is we create a trace with the mode with this name, right? Uh, and another one uh, connecting to the logical component of the uh, of the temperature warrior, which is the name of this uh, logical component. So this is what uh, this is a very easily uh, what we do to suggest uh, traces. All those traces you can see that are in a special state uh, suggested uh, in contrast uh, with the one that I have created manually, which is consistent. Of course, I can double click, I can check what are the elements that has been connected. And from here, I can uh, uh, accept uh, or discard uh, the suggested trace. I can do it uh, this uh, one by one, or I can just uh, select, uh, uh, click uh, and, and, and say, OK, I want uh, to, to accept uh, all uh, the suggestions uh, by just uh, one single click. All the suggestions will be accepted and uh, now all of them uh, will change a state uh, from consistent uh, into uh, into uh, sorry from uh, suggested sorry uh, into consistent uh, keeping the rationale that uh, tells you that uh, this uh, trace was suggested initially by by the tool and uh, that's all uh, this is the end of our seven uh, uh, scenario or seven steps uh, scenario or journey between uh, to, to link or to connect uh, text or requirements in an easy way and consistent way uh, with um, uh, model elements in Capella. I hope Laurent I'm still uh, in, in time aligned with uh, with the timing and uh, we can have some uh, minutes uh, for questions and answers. Yes, sure. So we have a few questions in the Q&A and Please, everybody, if you have used the chat, uh, try and duplicate your question in the Q&A because I will only go over what's in the Q&A. So uh, the first question, the first two questions were asked, uh, I believe, when you were showing the use case about going from doors to uh, Cameo. And the first question is, is it possible to generate functions from test your requirement? Hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, indeed, uh, I've not explained in detail, let's say, how we perform the transformation between uh, textual requirements and, and models. Uh, but what we basically do is, uh, based upon patterns, which is something that uh, Jose also mentioned, patterns are basically, just to summarize, templates which contain the different parts of a requirement, right? So uh, using these uh, patterns, we can identify the different parts of the textual requirement. And from those, we translate into this language that I mentioned previously, the CSRL. And from CSRL, we convert it into uh, CSML, Arcadia, so on and so forth, right? So this is the, the approach that we use in any kind of diagram, which means that basically we can also apply to an FBS, a functional breakdown uh, structure, or uh, re requirements uh, regarding a function specifically to convert them into a an FBS. Okay, I hope uh, th this uh, solved the the question. Okay, then the second question is: If you model to break down a segment, will it derive requirements also from the top requirement? Mm -hmm. That's uh, also a really interesting question. And in this case, what uh, what uh, happens basically is. If you have a model, for example, a PVS, and you have, let's say, the temperature warrior uh, or system as the father, uh, the father, sorry, and you have uh, several subsystems as the children, um, then if you try to generate, I believe you're referring to the generation of uh, textual requirements from models, right? Uh, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong. But uh, if that's the case, then uh, this model in, is going to be uh, transformed or generate, we're going to generate the textual requirements. Uh, only containing the structure of, for, for instance, in this case, the, the temperature warrior uh, has a subsystem, a uh, whatever subsystem, for instance, the temperature registration subsystem. Okay, so this is going to be the, the type of requirements that is going to be generated. The relationship is going to uh, be generated once we go into the traceability uh, capability that uh, Jose has uh, shown, in which we can actually relate two requirements or both requirements. 
as as they are linked in the model uh, in a, a parent to child relationship. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the answer. Then we have another question, uh, more recent. When creating traceability from textual requirements to Capella model elements, is it it will create several links from the textual requirement to each relevant model element if if uh, such links make sense? Uh, yes, uh, we can come out with uh, several links uh, in case uh, it makes sense. Yes, of course, could be several. Yeah. Okay, and we have. Pablo Lopez Negro saying thank you very much for the explanation. With this methodology, it will be possible to maintain traceability downstream and link requirements to results from detailed engineering models such as FEM, CAD, RAMS, uh, and so on, uh, even outside Capella. How would you address this mm -hmm. if you do? Yes, uh, we we connect. Uh... Of course, uh, it all depends on uh, the tool that uh, you use to to have uh, to to model and, and represent uh, such information. Uh, we have implemented, uh, especially with the with the launch of this new version, we have implemented uh, quite a lot of uh, connectors uh, uh, to modeling tools. Until until uh, this version, we were pretty much focused on text requirements. So we implemented in the past a lot of connectors to modeling. Sorry, to to requirements management systems. Now we have focused more on on modeling and, and simulation. So we have uh, we we can connect uh, uh, models in uh, Simulink. We can uh, do Open Modelica. We can uh, we can have uh, um, oh I don't remember the name, but uh, we have we can have uh, we can model with uh, some uh, uh, tools for modeling electronic uh, circuits. Uh, so it all depends on on you, the tool you use. So if you are interested uh, in knowing if uh, your tools are uh, supported by this approach, uh, just uh, drop me an email uh, and uh, I, I will tell you whether or not uh, the current version uh, provides uh, traceability to this particular tool. So the, the concept is, is is done, but it all depends, as I said, uh, on the specific uh, tool. By the way, implementing new connectors is something that uh, uh, we have uh, done uh, and we can do in, in a very quick manner. Okay, thank you. And the last question we have is, uh, I believe, a simple one. Do you connect with Excel import export? Of course, <laughs> of course. Yes. So the same, uh, the same uh, use case that uh, was uh, quickly, briefly introduced by by Jose. This uh, round trip. Uh, uh, when, when, uh, as I said at the beginning, we, I have, uh, we have decided to use IBM doors uh, uh, for all these scenarios. However, you can replace IBM doors uh, by tools like uh, Polarion, Team Center, uh, Windchill, and of course uh, uh, Excel, and of course uh, Word. So we have uh, uh, tools uh, that uh, are on top of uh, uh, Word as well to uh, parse uh, uh, requirements documents in Word and identify individual blocks of the of the Word uh, document as individual requirements that are uh, subject of uh, traces, subject of uh, of uh, generation of a model subject of uh, this round trip or whatever but uh, in excel is far easier than than in uh, than in word of course and of course uh, excel could be uh, uh, in so the excel logo could be here perfectly okay somebody has just asked uh, in which way does oslc play a role in your interoperability scenarios if mm -hmm. oslc is involved uh, yes, uh, it is. Uh, OSLC is uh, one more of our sources, so we can use, uh, for instance, OSLC uh, RM, OSLC for requirements management, as as the source. However, what uh, we are not doing, at least in this version, is uh, uh, using uh, uh, connections uh, coming from OSLC as uh, as an input uh, to inject uh, traces or to manage traces. So the traces that we manage uh, cannot be uh, represented in OSLC or we cannot import uh, traces from OSLC. What we do is, uh, uh, at least at the moment, uh, we we use OSLC as a source of requirements. One more, uh, uh, following just the uh, OSLC RM uh, uh, definition. 